destiny. Wait. No, no, it's all picked. There's no bands. All right, excellent. Well, it says bands on the left, but there aren't any, so wonderful. Nice overlay, Valve. <laughs> and go, quick, predict the whole draft, Franz. <laughs> I believe uh, Invoker. Nice, nice. All right, we're waiting on the Invoker pick here. Night Soccer. Winter Wyvern. Okay, it's and they're not, they're not being they're not being picked in the same order. No, yes, they are not. Night Stalker. Phantom right. Assassin. One more hero until we get going will be the puck. And the Jan puck. is leaping at the wheel. And now Maybe Lucini a need a stand in. <laughs> uh, the, Wait, even... Lucini already have a stand in though. The oh yes, yes, Lucini is the one with the stand-in. Okay, <laughs> getting my bearings once again. Game 3, Bronze, MRP, BTS, Galaxy Battles, Lucini versus VRFG. Series is tied up 1-1. Winner faces T-Show in the semifinals. And loser drops down to the lower bracket to face Mad Kings. Looks like we'll finally get a game. We'll see how long the pause is at the onset. Hopefully, I'm sharp enough to catch all the kills that we anticipate to be happening in the early game in this one. All right, there's going to be a pause, of course. Oh, no mangoes. I wonder if it's different if you have a ticketed game. Mm, good point. But are Nothing. any are any of these heroes the... All right, I'm looking to look. Oh, there's a high chance that they are, right? I'm looking. Uh, yeah. None, actually, none. So, yeah, you, we, we didn't get to test it. Oh, well. One, two. I'm kind of glad that none of them are, however, despite your theory, because if we had to get another pause, <laughs> I would have rage quit. And Blaze would have came after me. Has anyone ever rage quit a cast? Um... Not to my knowledge. Disconnected for sure. Uh, rage quit. Not to my knowledge. It'll happen. If All someone right, has, I would bet it would be a Russian caster. <laughs> G, we ready, G. It's the stand-in that... that paused it originally. He also requested help using his chat wheel. What can They're we do like for B you, sir? BRB Windows 10 automatic update. Come on, who See said you that? tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Oh, God. <laughs> and then the... we are verifying the integrity <laughs> of uh, of your uh... hard drive. Please wait. <laughs> Brother just message me. <laughs> Twelve hours later. All right, getting a Big Mac combo, boys. Instead of going to the gym, sounds good. We made it, Franz. Double boots first to the top lane. Actually, my gym's uh, twenty-four hours. Yeah, yeah I go. It's it's more about waking up in the like if I go post this cast it's already midnight take me an hour to work out it'll be right. one and then i'll, I'll be RFG, awake. a little bit a little bit disoriented so not ready for the fine man spirit breaker is gonna smack someone soon right nope my ball and each ward other down oh interesting ward placement instead of on top I'm... of the stairs but no it's to block the oh it the, blocks camp. the camp yeah ah. that pull super important when you uh when you this play against the Nature's Project. Easy denial already. CS like a Hog Champ. If you if you pull your lane back to the tower, the Nature's Prophet can't really do his job. Mm -hmm. You're also denying creeps from the Nature's Prophet. When you pull and when you pull it puts uh, the hero himself in a in a weird position where you can actually kill him. How does that work though with the one minute spawn? Uh, is it still rather effective? Yeah, so so the uh, you you block as a safe lane, you block your tower, and then the, the wyvern and the spirit breaker will sit between the wave and the and the enemy tier one to zone up the nature's prophet. 
and then when uh, when the neutral creeps do spawn, you know you have the uh, the spirit breaker zone out the Mitchell's prophet while the wyvern pulls and connects. Mm -hmm. So mid lane Zool starting out with his Dragon Knight early on. He has Jamari's Exhort uh, Invoker. And as you mentioned, should be a good lane uh, for the, the Invoker, at least as far as you know, last inning goes in a one-on-one -on -one in a vacuum. Jian bot lane, skilled up the orb already, so is a little bit susceptible to the, uh, the Lion Impale. Or Earth Spike, perhaps, I should say. As Rory will chase him down into the trees. But as we mentioned in the draft screen, Jian pretty uh, content to trade with this lion here early. So the Nature's Prophet was just forced to TP back to his tier 1. But uh, he's missing a lot of health and doesn't have a self, so there's a lot of kill potential when uh, VRFG's Arctic Burn comes back off cooldown. In the next year or so. At yep. this level in the game. Jian bot lane. Has a salve on his person and the uh, lion actually on his last tango already, so, so a good this, job. Uh, this start of the lane actually hurt the Dragon Knight a lot because I think when you have a Knight Stalker in your lane, you want to actually like physically force the Invoker out of the lane by like sitting between mm -hmm. the Greek wave and his tower. But J Jamari actually, oh, oops. Okay, TP in bottom lane. I knew this would happen after a break like that. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> no, I mean me missing first blood. <laughs> nothing, uh, nothing on you, sir. <laughs> Invincible makes his way down towards the mid lane as well. Uh, gonna join up with his invoker, but you know, as we were mentioning, the Dragon Knight early on in the lane, having his Night Soccer present, but not really being able to zone oh, effectively. At least the invoker. Meanwhile, Hex goes out onto the puck again with the right clicks from the Nature's Prophet. They're doing quite a bit of damage here. Yes. Treants will chase forward, but won't end up grabbing the kill. Invincible nearby, invisibility rune by the lion picked up. Arctic burn goes out onto the nature's prophet. Gion salving up as well. This sh could and should be a dead prophet if they can get in range. But the arctic burn slow actually expiring here. Orb gonna fly up towards the stair and does clip him barely. They need much more than that though. Impale will connect onto the puck and with the desolate damage, taking a lot here. Sticks up a little bit, but still brought down. They'll get the lion after the puck goes out and now chasing forward for more as Lucini in trouble here. Invincible going to fairy fire up at the stand and he's going to be taken down to Querty. Double kill for the Spectre early on, making good use of that Desolate uh, over in that valley by the uh, Radiant Jungle. A uh, really good start from VRFG so far. I think, uh, I mean, it's super important that they get a... Uh, get their other heroes aside from the Spectre in a good position because Spectre is the kind of hero that has to play around his allies ability to push in team fights so mm -hmm. you know the the Night Stalkers got a lot of EXP top the Nature's Prophet made quite a bit of space for this lion like the lion is probably in a better position than he normally would be right so so uh, should help VRFG going to the mid game because arguably I think Lucini have a lot easier of a time looking for kills uh, from like the five minute mark with the Spirit Breaker. That said, Nature's Prophet going to make his way back to the top lane and nearby is Invincible with the charge. They should have an Arctic Burn and Spectral Dagger will fly out. Nice, nice soccer though, he's fairly tanky. They can't really commit under tower here. Um, and actually Jericho taking a lot of damage from the Treants and the right clicks of the Creeps as well as the Nature's Prophet. Zul going to snag away a Bounty Rune from Invincible. And what I was going to mention is that um, usually by the first night, you know, ideally your Night Soccer hits that level 3 mark um, with hit Nature's Prophet vacating the top lane and him spending some time in the mid lane. He didn't get all that much experience before this first night, but is still relatively close to level 3. Nature's Lion Prophet mid. wrapping on mid. Oh, they have vision though um, with the uh, Spirit Breaker charge. Take a look at the higher vision and they should have seen the Lion briefly. Your Pricker now going to rotate through. Lion nearby. Gion on the high ground with the puck. Comes through with the orb. And Impale will connect on all three. Sunstrike is there, however. Two of them get hit by the Breathe Fire. And that is going to uh, reduce their damage output. And now they're still unable to bring down the Nature's Prophet as Gion the puck, the first one to fall. Invincible could be in trouble here. Sprout up in one. And they won't even need it as the uphill right click finishes him off. Now the PA perhaps TPing into danger here. 
uh, is going to try and get something on the back end in this engagement. Night Soccer perhaps a little bit too quick. Has eight stick charges as well. That make that nine and should be able to make it out to safety. He is going to get charged up though with the residual kind of uh, vision given by the the uh, stifling dagger. So it's just Dota two now. There was nine heroes mid. <laughs> Stifling Dagger jumps forward. Charge gonna come through as well. Arctic Burn is there. Impale actually whiffs this time from the Lion. Hex is gonna go out, however, onto the uh, PA. And the Knights are gonna be able to make it out. Now gonna rotate back through Void available for this NS. Drops it onto the PA. Splinter Blast gonna fly through, connect onto the Lion. Three men impale again from Roy. And now they've rotated the Spectre and who takes out the PA. Illusory Orb gonna come through though from Lucini Gian. He doesn't jaunt forward, however. Now Jericho out in no man's land. And they're just body blocking him up as the Dagger. Another double kill. Second of the game for the Spectre. 4 0 and 1. Somehow, sitting in her, her bottom lane, involved in five of the seven kills early on, VRFG bringing the kills on a silver platter to their Spectre player. Dusk flies out mid lane, and Void is going to be there. They do have the Dragon Tail. Charge, though, going to fly through, keep these two heroes on VRG side at bay. No mana, really, to speak of on the Invoker for uh, an attempt at a Sunstrike kill. You know, I remember saying this game would be really scrappy, but I didn't... Uh... Didn't expect this. I mean, nine kills, six minutes in. Pretty much all ten heroes have left their lane at some point uh, to join in on the fight. And no one was in the top lane for like a period of a minute and a half. So, quite an interesting game so far. I mean, the Spectre is doing really, really well. Has the uh, has a battle fury queued up. Oh God! <laughs> Not again, Querty. Not again. <laughs> After going Battle Fury Slark, thinking about Battle Fury Spectre. Best item in the game confirmed. Highest Battle CS, Fury. highest net worth at this point. So I suppose Battle if there's Fury one is the future. <laughs> if there's one time you can afford it, I guess it would be when you're leading seven minutes in CS, or CS and net worth as a Spectre. Charge going to fly through top lane, Jericho. Does have the Splinter Blast level two as well, but the Haunt coming through from QWERTY. And with the Desolate, Void is going to be there. Jericho should be in trouble here and does end up falling. PA, they're going to rotate in and get the return kill onto the Night Stalker. QWERTY does have a TP to make it back down to bottom lane as he pleases. Can pick up the Void Zone at the side shop for the full, full Perseverance. And it does look like he'll fully commit to this very awkward battle here he built. Bot lane, they do get the hex out on to the puck. Uh, cold embrace though from the south side from Jericho will keep the puck safe. And now they maybe want to press forward. Arctic burn out on to the uh, lion. He'll try for the TP out. Won't make it. Orb will finish him off. Actually, the right click from Invincible post charge will be what kills him. Now in mid lane, they go in on the invoker with three. And they have the poison or corrosive breath from the dragon knight as well as the treants here. So this tower, this tier one tower. Uh, seems not long for this world as Destiny begins nah. to put the right clicks into it alongside Red Moon. Meanwhile, slow skirmish in the uh, river as Zul picks up the arcane room. I think whenever the uh, whenever VRFG feel, see that Puck and Wyvern are on one part of the map, I think the Nature's Prof and DK are going to feel like they can push an another lane, especially when their uh, their haunts down, so they're kind of in like split push mode at the moment. Looking to eclipse the level 8 mark shortly is that uh, Dragon Knight bottom lane as his Dragon Form looks to expire shortly. We get a couple of right clicks into the tower to benefit from that corrosive breath. They normally Lucini, uh, the, you'd think their lineup would be good at uh, counter pushing with Ivern, but. Uh, the puck is relatively under level. So is oh, the top lane. Sunstrike actually missing on the Night Stalker as he got bounced out of it by the bash and a huge bit of misfortune for Lucini. And yeah, you see the Sori coming out from the Invoker. Felt he didn't place it perfectly. Uh, but that means not only does the Night Stalker survive, they get a, a two return kills on the PA and the Spirit Breaker. Stand in, disconnecting at this point. Um, don't know if it's a rage quit just yet. But 11 to 4 for VRFG. Very strong start for them here in the early game. Okay. <laughs> no.
Actually, this puts the DK and Nature's Prop in a position to push in. At minimum, you know, they have to, they force the the Puck and Wyvern top, and right now the Puck and Wyvern, they're actually pressuring this bottom lane. But, uh, really, Lucini's in, like, a, a losing proposition because their PA isn't uh, in a position to to go for any kills on her own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes a lot more resources for Lucini to, to make stuff happen than VRFG, not only because of the gold lead, but just because of the nature of their heroes, like, uh, this, uh, pop, pop. Yeah, seven seconds until the dragon form's available already. Convening up top are the Prophet and the Dragon Knight. No one else TP in just yet. It is daytime, so certainly not as effective as a whole is the VRFG lineup. But hey, you can always TP across the map and pick up bounty runes, as the Prophet will do. He's going to get coiled up, though. It does have a TP out, and will opt to go for it. They're going to try and burst him with the Sunstrike, and they do it just barely. So they will finally grab themselves a kill in response to all the mayhem that has elapsed at the hands of VRFG. He, he would have lived if not for that Sunstrike, right? So I bet he wasn't thinking that that, that would happen when he TP'd. Jump forward top lane with the Splinter Bass and the Arctic Burn. It's a quick kill on the Night Stalker. Still though, QWERTY looking to turn and they have the Lion nearby as well. Splinter Bass will slow him momentarily though. And that gives enough distance for the PA. Not to make it away. Still, though, TP in top lane, and Haunt is going to be there. They're actually going to go straight for the PA, so they'll feign the attempt on the Wyvern and make it over to the east on the PA. This tower is going to go down as well as the Wyvern. Double kill going the way of Destiny's Dragon Knight, and he'll start to get to work on the tower. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Night Stalker finding levels. Uh, is going to be charged up. Gion jumping for it as well. They don't have a coil for another few seconds, but they should have the burst damage. He's going to pop the darkness and try to juke them out. We'll fly over to the east. He's going to drop all those trees down, though, and this is going to be a dead giveaway as to where he is. Coil will find him. He'll silence up uh, the spear breaker, but does end up going down. Space created, however, as Rory farming middle lane, or at least soaking some experience middle lane on the lion. The rest of his unit uh, taking out that tier one uh, top lane after a good fight going the way of VRFG. In VRFG, you have like supreme map control advantage right now. You have, uh, they have a two tower advantage, so, like pretty pretty important towers too, like the enemy mid and safe lane towers, and they have uh, a specter and nature's prophet. So you know, Lucini have to be really careful with their positioning, but at the same time, they need to get super farmed right because this PA also uh, looking to pick up a battle fury. Okay. TP's right into killing her own Nature's Prophet. Finishes off the battle fury, but unfortunately, Winter's Curse gonna ensure that the first thing. <laughs> Whereas he does with his battle fury is kill off one of his allies. However, 12 minutes in, this is a you know faster than anti mage time uh, on the B fury here. Uh, not faster than anti mage specifically, but just uh, you know fast. She's got six kills, and her, her team is up two towers. Yeah, six kills certainly help in that regard. Almost level 11 on the spectre, top of the net worth, and similarly as far as experience goes, sitting. She's gonna get the uh, anti-mage build, battle fury manta. Difference is, she can go defusal. <laughs> uh, mid's in trouble. Anti-mage cannot. Meanwhile, walking uphill, yeah, the invoker silenced up, and he's gonna just be right-click to death. They will get the breathe fire of the off for good measure. Rory, though, he's still alive here. Splinter blast finishes him off. And Nether Strike trying to find the uh, Night Soccer. He will get fogged momentarily. Zul now going to fly over the cliff. Dragon Knight left out by his lonesome, but is very tanky. Hits onto two with the Breathe Fire, and that will Gratitude. stymie any further aggression. Querty still AFK farming bot lane. Red Moon getting a little bit of split pushing done on the top side of the map. And Wyvern could just be dead here. Dragon Tail is available and will be thrown out. They have the nuke as well. And one more right click. Well, the Corrosive Breath, not enough through the Cold Embrace just yet. Red Moon still hanging around. No response bottom inbound just yet. Yeah, and bottom big fight going on as they Stick will out. take out QWERTY. So arguably the bigger kill going the way of Lucini as far as heroes go, but they do secure this tier two tower as well um, with what they grabbed top. I mean, overall, VRFG are still in a much better position. This, P this PA has to like keep fighting her way into the game, and I bet you know the enemy team VRFG are going to be aware of that. So they're going to go for pickoffs of their own. They're going to make sure that Cordy isn't in a position to uh, to get picked off again, especially since he has the battle fury. You know, whenever you get the battle fury, you want to 
make the most of it by uh, farming mm -hmm. for a little bit. Mm -hmm. That being said, they all have they have all of their ultimates this available my life in about 30 seconds on VRFG's squad. So yeah, Querty is just short that. of the level two haunt. So perhaps just wanted to grab that up before they make a movement. Like, uh, VR actually don't have to be super, super scared this game. I think they have, uh, quite a good late game with just the Spectre. Darkness available to Zul. He'll fly up, get the Crippling Fear off onto the puck. They'll try and burst him down quickly under the silence. Need a couple more right clicks, though, and Jion should be able to survive just for now. Will jaunt off to the north. Winter's Curse is going to be there. Charge through onto the Night Stalker, and they'll get the puck. Now everyone kind of pincered in this corner. Dragon Tail up on the Spirit Breaker, killing off the Wyvern on the east side end. Uh, the two main cores from Lucini's side not involved here. Glyph will be deployed here and will be refreshed as the tier 1 goes down. But PA, under the vision of a ward, is going to get hexed up. Void will be there as well. They have the impale and the finger. Not even needed is the earth spike as they follow it up with a set of nukes. I mean, the RFG's movements are super cool. Normally you think... Uh that they'd be sitting back for a while, but I don't think they're going to release any of this pressure that they have on the map. Especially since, uh, you know, Dragonite and Nature's Prophet are heroes that are configured for, for pushing early. Mm -hmm. Trying to catch something out with the charge queued up on the Nature's Prophet is the entire land of Lucini. Soundtrack will fly through, but it is going to whip once again. Dragon Tail will keep the Spirit Breaker from popping off that Nether Strike, and... Without the Winter's Curse, nothing to lock down BRFG as they'll be able to extricate themselves from that bottom lane. Querty back to farming has picked up the Asha in the meantime. Money changes hands. Lion. Ah. Rip. Rest is just lion. <laughs> Rip indeed. Invincible gonna pick himself up a Ace Rune. Still though, Invoker, he's, you know... Been kind of AFK for the last little bit, had, has had his Midas and three components already of that Aghanim. So he can become a team fight presence and perhaps even nuisance for uh, VRFG moving forward. Only 350 gold away with that tier 1 tower being taken out bottom lane. So it seems uh -huh. VRFG are ready to fight, however, with Darkness available. They're going to smoke up the Dragon Knight alongside the Lion and the Night Stalker. Spirit Breaker would be the uh, hero that wants to tank this. Invoker would be the more ideal pick here. But Invincible is in a great position to soak this gank. He walks down the stairs. He will be scouted by Radiant Vision. Yeah, he thinks he's ganking a smoke gank, but... Nice soccer, gonna find the uh, silence up onto the invoker. The haunt comes out now, right on top of the invoker, and jumping forward with the lion. They just need a finger, can't get it just yet, but they will with the impale. Finish him off now. Dragon tail onto the puck. A couple of right clicks. Nice with this curse though. Will eliminate one. That is gonna be the lion. Still, they finish off the puck even though they get coiled. And Querty actually rather low on this specter. Still though, the dragon knight just serving as the frontliner. For his unit. He is going to get split off from the rest of his team, but still such a tanky target. For now, it looks like that'll be all she wrote for that engagement. They do get the invoker that they wanted with that smoke when all is said and done. Darkness is going to be used up. Uh, two minutes, though, until the Night Soccer is once again uh, at full effect. Dude, Battle Fury Spectre taking off. Battle Fury catch up and farm. Looking to catch up, though. I mean, uh... Can't beat that 12 minute battle for your timing. And then also, uh, Spectre is like really good against the Valkyrie because you can get on top of him, and mm -hmm. Valkyrie is not, not a hero that can really get away from that, especially if uh, Spectre you know, picks up that mount and picks up an item like uh, the Fusel for the full anti mage cosplay. Just what I've been waiting for. Oh, Invoker in a bit of trouble here. Yeah, mid lane gonna get Dragon Tailed up. Breathe Fire is gonna be there as well. They get the Void off. He has the Tornado, however. Charge flying through as well. The TP into the Nature's Prophets, into the path of the charge. Splinter Glass and Arctic are gonna fly out. Dark. Uh, they turn though with the Dragon Tail and Breathe Fire. Finger of Death from the low ground gonna finish off the Invoker. And despite losing the Dragon Knight for the first time in this one, still feels like BRFG taking this engagement rather handily. 
Um, nice play by the like Invoker on the back end to uh, pick up DK there with the Deafening Blast, but Finger of Death from downtown finishes off the uh, Invoker. There's a, there's a really cool thing with Spectre right now. You can do Roche really fast because the Dust Slip from the Mantas does full damage to uh, Roche, you can see here. So, uh, it actually makes her really fast at uh, taking Roche. Formerly not very good at it at all. Winter's Curse gonna fly out though. It also makes her really fast at killing her teammates. Red Moon in trouble. He's gonna get coiled up. Ward will connect and finish him off. Now Waning Rift catches the Lion. Jericho a little bit out in no man's land. He's gonna get the cold embrace off. Stifling Dagger gonna finish off the Lion. Now the uh, Sunstrike is gonna be onto Kirby. He's just gonna turn and man up. Double kill already for the Spectre. Aegis in hand is gonna pop off the uh, Haunt. Doesn't look to go onto SNK. Chasing down the puck, one other illusion, but in the mid lane is where Quarty chooses to haunt in. And actually going to just get taken out, but the Invoker in trouble now. Actually gets off the Ghost Walk to disjoint the Dragon Tail. Still though, in fighting shape is the uh, Dragon Knight. Meteor going to fly through. A little bit of tick damage being done to the Dragon Knight. He's still ta tanky, gets up to the high ground, unable to arm the toggle as the Waning Rift flies through. Quarty going to TP out here. No uh, way to cancel this. As after the Roshan game, per, uh, perhaps VRFG getting uh, a little confident there. Uh, pressing forward, they do end up losing the Aegis and their Dragon Knight. I mean, that haunt kind of baited Cordy, and I think he wanted to kill the PA, but the PA was already TPing out, so you know, he looked uh, on the map for another target, but ended up baiting his uh, DK into the fight. Still completed up the full Manta here. Uh, DK buys out on an Ogre Club on the way to his BKB. But first time in a while we've seen Lucini on the Radiant side of the map. And instantly under a Sentry Ward, unfortunately he's for Jericho. These win Winter Courses are doing a ton of work for his team. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's picked off a hero with it uh, almost every time. So Mid lane, Prophet in trouble is going to get coiled up. And uh, Red Moon just going to taunt his way to death it seems. Arctic Burn, Waning Rift is there, a couple right clicks. It's the, uh, the auto taunt when you kill the courier, I think. Ah, uh, he got a courier. Uh, good call. Yeah. So he gets something out of his death. Very few people would taunt uh, in that situation <laughs> manually. Hey, this is South America, Franz. Don't put it past them. Yeah. Um, you gotta often. find... Uh, Bind the taunt to every key on your keyboard, there so you anything go. you press will trigger it. There you go. The real secrets from the pros. On the way to the Agonims for Zul on the Night Stalker, still uh, a far cry from that, however. Diffusal Blade being purchased up by the Spectre. She's anti mage. Mm hmm. trying to think of what if with all this net worth she could have built but hey probably wouldn't have this net worth without the, without the battle fury yeah um i mean radiant's pretty good farming tool too but anyways mid lane we don't like to go on, on the winter wyvern charge now being queued up against the night soccer but the spirit breaker for invincible will think better of it as they disengage quirty the shoving in the top lane in the meantime the other thing to note is that all these bad fights that vrfg have had their, uh, the haunt was like used or, or was on cooldown and I think it's super important that they open these fights with the haunt uh, because they need, there's so many targets they have to locate like they have to prevent the wyvern from casting spells and then the spectre has to get on top of the invoker red moon absolutely eviscerated by snk bottom lane and they're actually gonna look to re-engage off of this so haunt in towards the bottom lane get the silence out onto the pa she can't blink away is gonna be taken out and Gian just gonna turn tail and run under the cover of shadow blade uh, is Destiny's Dragon Knight. He won't find anything with his invisibility, so Nature's Prophet down, Haunt cooldown used. They will get the PA, and Wave is in a position where they can threaten, if not take out this tier 2 in the death duration of that PA. Shadow Blade up on DK. Well, he's had it for a while, and mm -hmm. he can't put BKB now, which should help him a lot in these fights, especially since most of Lucini's, uh Damage to him is, is magical right now. Still a while before the Roche spawn. Now top lane, they have found the Invoker, thinking about 
queuing in the TP from the Nature's Prophet. He doesn't have anything to stop the TP, however, from the Invoker. And a heads-up play. He's going to secure his safety for now. Meanwhile, charging over in the top lane is that Spirit Breaker. Looking to find out the Night Sucker. Nature's Prophet is nearby with an Orchid. He will get the charge off, though, and the Waning Rift full combo with the Sunstrike kit finishes off the Night Stalker. Prophet needs to be a little bit careful. Hanging around, though, with that Orchid. Looking to try and find the Puck. He will get the Sprout off. Does Gion have a blink away? However, he does. And now trying to charge away. Hex up is there from Rory on the uh, Spirit Breaker. He'll end up falling for his troubles. Dragon Knight mid lane, looks like they may be thinking about it here as SNK gonna jump down to the low ground and instantly into the invisibility rune. There is a sentry nearby here, but SNK continuing not to pursue or selecting not to pursue. There should be a talent for uh, for Spirit Breaker where Charger of Darkness causes all of his teammates together. Huh? Haunt gonna fly out and Reality and Diffusal Blade ready onto the Wyvern. Winter's Curse going to be forced out here. And Quirthy's all by his lonesome, still yet undeterred. John going to jump forward and just going to be right clicked up. And so they do get the Invoker out of it. While Destiny continues to just. Do you want to describe your Spirit Breaker uh, talent again? No, I just I just had a had an idea, right? Like uh. You know, and the ags on Spirit Breaker is pretty uh, underwhelming right now. It is. So you should change it so that when Spirit Breaker charges, everyone on his team also gets <laughs> to charge that target. And you get the charge speed, so... Oh, the plays that you could make with that um, to fuck your teammates over. <laughs> it should stun them too, you know? <laughs> so like, no, you think about it, it's like staggered, right? So it's like one after the other. He's got five people just stunning someone with a charge. <laughs> you uh, have your, your carry position, you know, split pushing out in some lane. Um, fight impending in the base, you just force him to charge back. <laughs> Seems like a good, well, you good play you can make. It. I suppose you could. You, you could cancel it, but you could also just five times uh, charge someone, you know? Yeah. That, that seems like a much better eggs than the current one. So actually, uh, Lucini have done a really good job of keeping themselves in the game. I mean, I I thought this game would be a a stop after I saw the uh, the early game, but That's you know they, they managed to get a lot of pickoffs with their heroes, which was surprising to me. And then now they're actually in a position where the RFG, you notice they have to like just sit back and farm when uh, when that haunts down because that haunts super important for the team fight, but also the PA and the the invoker. Are, are in a position to actually kill a lot of VRFG's heroes, so... The Radiant see everyone on the Dire side. Dire did not see the Night Stalker currently. In around. round. Zul looking to flank from the backside. He's going to pop the Darkness. Haunt is going to be there. They get the Science onto the Invoker. He's going to use himself up. Dust is going to fly out onto the Winter Wyvern. And a nice tornado through a few. Red Moon's already taken a lot of damage. Winter's Curse is only going to be onto the Prophet and the Lion. And they'll press forward, killing off the Wyvern with the BKB. They're putting in work into the Invoker. Nice blink forward, Dust Finger of Death from the Lion. They'll finish off the Invoker. Now chasing down the Spirit Breaker. Trying to charge away, but he will get Dragon Tailed and Orchided. And Querty double kill for the Spectre. Finally finding their opening. Still chasing for more is Rory. He gets the hex up, but may just end up oh. dying. He blinks a little bit short. PA thinking about it, but he's going to play it safe. He was actually totally out by his lonesome. This uh, line is insane. <laughs> Somehow survives it. Hey, if you look crazy enough, they may just believe you. And no one actually sitting be behind him, but now... You ever see a puck and the uh, PA just run away from the level 14 <laughs> line? Uh, that that is the fir that is a first. So you can bottle that up, put it in a time capsule. We may never see it again. Uh, Rax is though 28 minutes down uh, to a lineup that had a massive lead. We see that quite often as the Wyvern can get all his mana drained and in style they'll let the Treants finish her off. Meanwhile, they'll defend up top lane. And opt not to continue forward as just the one hero on the sidelines 
for Lucini's side. But 28 minutes here, base is breached. IV RFG side. Devil Abyssal damage. Blade picked up for Spectre. Spectre is actually running his best anti mage cosplay right now. <laughs> Just need a blink dagger. That's it. Yeah. Needs a blink dagger that leaves an illusion behind. <laughs> So uh, that that team fight we saw bottom was precisely how VRFG uh, want to start their team fights. Like I think the last or not the last couple, but some of the last couple of team fights we've seen from them have been a little bit shaky, specifically because uh, they they weren't really able to locate the targets they had. But you you see the Night Stalker was scouting them out uh, with that ward and, and uh, open the fight with the silence on the wyvern, which is super important because when you silence the wyvern, then they can't use the Winter's Curse to set up their team fight. Jericho, oh, he's in trouble. He's gonna get dragon tailed up just as he drops a sentry. And with the spectral dagger, Quirty will be able to finish him off. Cheese in the pit he is gonna be gobbled up here by the DK and Wyvern on the sidelines for the next little bit. Night Soccer gonna find himself a spirit breaker and gets off the crippling fear. Huge wrath of nature coming through. Lion there with the hex. And that'll be an easy kill as the. Dragon Knight Spectre begin to prep the push impending in the mid lane. Now, I have to say before this game ends, like the battle for your Spectre is not that bad. I mean, all right, this is just an intimidation haunt, so it seems. Quirty into the towards the bottom lane where he's kind of isolated out now between the PA and the Invoker. Will purge off the Cold Snap though with the Mantis style and now jumping through with the Impale through two hex onto the Invoker as well. Finger of Death. They'll finish off the PA. Disarmed is the Spectre currently, but she's got the Fusal Blade in just a moment, and they will be able to silence up the Puck. Cube. Huge right clicks from the Desolate as well. Gian in trouble is going to phase shift away. Meanwhile, the Dragon Knight just objective gaming, working on the buildings. Square T going to have the uh, Typhling Dagger, or Spectral Dagger expire. And may have the Dragon Knight killer off. Does have the Aegis available though. So we'll continue to press forward. And as VRFG press forward, Lucini tap out of this one. 31 minutes in. You mentioned it's a pretty good show of resilience from Lucini, the way that early game went. Uh, but via RFG, uh, they take this game pretty much in all three phases. Couple of, you know, stumbling points in the mid game, but they'll secure the uh, the series win when all is said and done. I mean, the game was super scrappy at the start. And I think VRFG just came came ahead in all of those early game engagements. Actually, thank you for that. That battle theory is super, super nice on Spectre because... Spectre's a, a, a late game hero, so you need like a farming item, and traditionally that farming item is uh, Radiance. But you know, Battle Free got a little bit better. It also gives her a little bit of HP and mana sustain, which is super nice because you can use the dagger to farm, and you also have to uh, always be ready to fight. So I think that Battle Fury pickup ended up uh, letting her scale to the point where Lucini couldn't really. Uh, really deal with it mm -hmm. definitely allowed her to continue to widen the gap uh after gaining that early advantage ends up you know 800 ish gpm on the specter 850 xpm um but throughout kind of the series uh vrfg did look a bit stronger than lucini and they'll take the victory here move on to face t show been a long drawn out evening guys thank you for bearing with us uh through the breaks mrp and franz here if you enjoyed the cast, you can follow myself over on Twitter at MRP Dota. You can follow my lovely co-caster at HelloFronz. Uh, and you can follow Beyond the Summit at Beyond the Summit on Twitter as well um, for all times when the three of us will be going live. Till then, it's been Galaxy Battles SA qualifiers in the semifinals tomorrow, uh, two days from now. I think there's some group B actioning, uh, action happening tomorrow. Um, we're going to have... Uh, VRFG versus T Show. Down in the lower bracket, it's going to be Lucini uh, versus Mad Kings. Uh, so stay tuned with that. Just follow on uh, Beyond the Summit on Twitter. A lot more Galaxy Battles qualifiers to come your way. Till then, MRP and Franz, me signing out of this one, guys.